All right, in this video, I'm going to do some examples of factoring and or simplifying uh, some expressions. So in part A here, we have sine squared plus cotangent squared times sine squared. Now, I think we could certainly factor a sine squared out, maybe even, um, I don't know if it's any quicker or any easier. Um, you could even rewrite cotangent squared as cosine squared over sine squared, cancel, and use an identity. But let's use this idea of factoring. So we can factor out the sine squared theta, and then we would have 1 plus cotangent squared theta. But recall there's an identity for 1 plus cotangent squared theta, that is cosecant squared of theta. But what is cosecant squared theta? That's the same thing as 1 over sine squared theta. So really, uh, we have sine squared of theta over sine squared of theta, and that's simply going to equal positive 1. So this first expression simply reduces to positive 1. Um, let's maybe do b here as well. So let's see, we've got 2 minus cosine squared over 1 minus sine x. So a um, couple different things that we could do here. Uh, again, the first thing that kind of, you know, we could try to get common denominators and group things together. Uh, maybe that'll make things work out nicely. Um, I also remember, though, there's a uh, relationship between cosine squared and sine squared. So again, we can use our identity that cosine squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. So if we solve this for cosine squared, we'll get that cosine squared x equals 1 minus sine squared x. That's what I'm going to plug in the numerator. So we would have 2 minus, well, 1 minus sine squared x over 1 minus sine x. And, you know, why, why does this help? Well, um, I recognize that this numerator is the difference of perfect squares. We can now simply factor this numerator um, a little bit. You know, and kind of think about, you know, sort of equivalently, if this was like 1 minus x squared. You've got 1 minus something squared. How does 1 minus something squared factor? It factors as well 1 minus x and 1 plus x. Again, it's a difference of perfect squares. So instead of just plain old x, we've got sine x. So 1 minus sine squared is going to factor as 1 minus sine x and then 1 plus sine x. But hey, we've got that 1 minus sine x just hanging out in the bottom. So really, we can cancel those, uh, those factors out. And then we'll be left with 2 minus 1 plus sine x. But now I can simply distribute out this negative. I will get 2 minus 1. And again, if we distribute the negative, minus sine x. Well, 2 minus 1 is 1. So we'll simply be left with 1 minus sine x. So. You know, again, a little trickier. Again, this is what makes these problems hard. You know, I, I know it has something to do with an identity. Um, it's got something to do with an identity, but it's just sort of, uh, you know, where do you use it and when do you use it? And sometimes once you use it, you know, maybe it's not readily, uh, maybe you don't see that this factors immediately. But, uh, you know, again, you just kind of have to get your hands dirty, play with things a little bit. Certainly as you do more examples, I think they'll start becoming a little more intuitive and a little bit easier.